Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about how to make a highly compressed look using pretty much any image that has an alpha channel. All right, so this is what we're going to be making. It's like a nice 1980s vibe, kind of Blade Runner, you know, with a hard G GIF. As always, we're going to go over this stuff pretty quickly, but if you want any more in-depth information on this, you can download this project file from our website for a dollar. All right, so let's take a look. Let's break this whole thing down by starting from the very bottom. Started from the bottom. Now we're here on big black. We've got curves. That is to make this whole thing a lot more contrasty. And we have a box blur just to kind of smooth it out because otherwise it's this. And if you turn the whole stack back on, it's got hard dots in there and I didn't want that. So fast blur. Gives you that kind of uh, oscilloscope kind of look to it. All right, so let's go to the next layer. Poorly named shape one. This is actually just a vignette. Vignetter. And then above that, we have a grid. And if we solo this guy and do that, you can see this is what that grid looks like. We set the width to 60 so that we get squares in here. Then we have another grid on top of that. And that just gives us a small bit of grid in between. If we click on this, you can actually see what it is. It's box blurred, but we have a grid that's 15 pixels with a smaller border. So if we turn this off, you can see it's a much smaller grid that's blurred. And above that, we have the layer where all the magic happens. And that is our base layer because this is a procedural effect. So if we click into this, you can see basically it's just this text with some JS classic layers put on top of it. This one's set to overlay. This one's set to normal. We're just adding complexity by stacking two of them on top of each other. This doesn't do anything. Nothing moves. It's just this. And you're not limited to just text in here. Pretty much any image or anything that has an alpha channel, all of the edges can have this effect applied to it. So let's go back to our compressed layer here. These other ones are just intermediate stuff that I had messed with. So clearly we have a lot going on in this base layer. Let's turn all of the effects off except for the first one. And we can see what we're doing. So the first thing we have is a CC image wipe. And that's actually animated so that this thing grows on. The next thing was we have a CC image wipe. Wow, imagine that. And that one's animated so that it goes away. I know, tricky. So the next thing is a CC glass, and that's set to the surface using itself, and this gives it a little bit of bump. As you can see, that gives it this uh, total recall vibe. The so like 1992 or 1989 one, not the, not the current one. The damn you quiet one. Not, not the new one. So then we have a displacement map. And surprise, surprise, we're looking back at the same layer. If we open up these keys, you can see that our displacement map here animates from a small negative displacement to a positive displacement, which means this thing is going to go all the way to the top. So this is all above middle gray, so it's going to shoot upward instead. So this value is technically negative direction. So that's how that whole thing is accomplished. But note that some of this stuff is left here because the glass effect makes some of this black. So that's what gives it this outer blockiness. So if that's all you're looking for, that's all you have to do is just not animate this thing and just vertically displace all of this stuff off of the screen. But we're using Colorama because we're going crazy with it, which adds all of this like crushed, screwed up JPEG kind of goodness, which if you didn't know is another way to pronounce GIF. So we got that JPEG look and then we go over here and we have a Minimax, which then gets us back to that GIF look from before. And then we use this displacement map here to just give it a little bit of that giffy goodness to push it back in just one more time, just, just to give it, you know, something interesting. So combine all of that makes this happen, which is pretty neat. But what is that without glows? I mean, it's, it's pretty crap without glows. So throw a deep glow on there. Might be a little, a little hot, but that's okay. Because it was the 90s and, you know, that, that was in. So then we have a TV glow, which is basically an adjustment layer set to add. We just have a directional blur on it that goes vertical by a lot. Then above that, we have one more grid to just give it that CRT vibe. Then above that, we have some color correction using one of our LUTs. Don't actually remember which one this is because I forgot to name the effect. I'll go back and figure that out. Let's do that now. All right, through the process of editing, we will determine that this is actually lemon. Lemon. Okay, there we go. And that's that. All right, so after that, we got nothing because that's pretty much what we did there. We added some saturation to it. We bumped up the intensity of the slut, brought the blacks down, which we could go back up here. Eh, nah, I'm not a fan of that. We'll bring it back. 
gives it a nice contrast in the edge. Too far, too far. Could bump the shadows up a little bit. It's kind of more what I intended. I actually calibrated this monitor. This is a brand new, just giant, super wide monitor that I had to get because of some Hackintosh issues I had. And uh, so now I'm actually running a full-on calibrated setup for this thing. I'm not looking at any scopes or anything. So we are, uh, we are, we're testing it out. This project was made in a different computer. So but anyway, that is that. So we get the same same deal. So this is kind of like, you know, 80s, late 80s, early 90s, kind of, you know, GIF style. But if you want to go back to like a night 70s GIF, we can bring this in. We got some chroma blur here from Boris FX Sapphire Collection. And uh, we're going to blur that chroma. And then you can get a little bit more of a washed out kind of super vintage vibe. The greens are a little bit more like that, you know, old console style. Maybe like an IBM PS2 or, you know, some sort of Tandy variant. If you just wanted something IBM compatible. And you didn't want to drop that Macintosh money. Because that actually might have been more expensive than the new Mac Pro. And I mean, spec wise, the new Mac Pro and the old Macintosh, they're probably pretty similar. I mean, the current Mac Pro's hardware is almost as old as the original one. And the new one doesn't seem to be much better. Anyway, if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you. And yeah, it's GIF. Sorry, Andrew. Light.